Okay, we're coming to our last and final episode on this whole thing on what the Quran is sifting through, going and putting the Quran into here, taking this book and trying to see how did it begin? Where did it all begin? Where were the antecedents? And you've done a great job going through that. We're getting lots of good responses. What you're going to do now is to actually make it even more visible by just like we showed those sifters as sin sifters. That's a visual representation of what you and I do and what Mel does and what uh, Paul and Thomas and Murad and Joe, all of us do. We sift the standard Islamic narrative, the SIN, sin. We sift it and we try to see what really happened. You're going to do that now, but you're going to do it using another visualization. You're going to use a comic strip. You've put together this comic strip. I've seen it. It looks great because as you everybody knows once you put it in a visual form it sticks in your mind it's much easier to communicate people can use it you can stick this in fact people i would say take these comics that he's putting that he's going to introduce and print them off stick them into your bible and then show it to your muslim friend because these are the kind of things we need uh, as helps to communicate what we're trying to say over to you show us your little comics trick about how you believe the quran came to be. Hello, Jay. Thank you. Um, yeah, yes, I, uh, I think a comic strip and pictures are, are much more, much more simple to, 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 to get, to get to, to get the point, to get the, the big picture. We already did several videos on the Quran. We explain um, some very complex issues and still there might be some, some confusion um in the head of your audience and i hope that this uh, little comic strip will help them understand the big picture uh, of how the um, the quran was made the islamic quran was made yeah. so let me share my screen and I, I want to start with the first step of this uh, process of the making process of the islamic quran the first step where was the Judeo Nazarenes? They were the teachers of the Arab preachers. There were this uh, very, very small Jewish current that believed uh, that Jesus was the Messiah, but he was a political Messiah. And they believed that they could trigger his second return, his second coming on earth. Uh, and so they could trigger the apocalypse by conquering Jerusalem, rebuilding the temple and um, restarting the, um, the sacrifices and Moses' religion there. What, what then they, they had a plan to do this. They wanted to, to, to make an alliance with the, their uh, Christian, the Arab Christians, the neighbors, and to benefit uh, from their military help. And in order to, to get them into the project, they took their sacred scriptures, their kitab in Arabic, their sacred scriptures, I think it was the Torah, it was maybe a bit of the Gospels, but it was... Um, it, it might have evolved in the Judeo-Nazarene context into a Judeo-Nazarene sacred scripture. They also had other scriptures and they made an Arabic lectionary, a Quran, so in Arabic, out of those scriptures. And they wanted to present this Arabic lectionary to their Arab neighbors in order to for, for them to join the their project of the conquering Jerusalem and so on. And so this was the first step, the Judeo-Nazarene translated in, into Arabic some of their sacred scriptures and they made, they so made an Arabic lectionary, an Arabic Quran. Then those Judeo-Nazarene uh, taught some Arab preacher we don't know whether there were one or several preachers. We have clues that tells us that maybe, maybe there were several preachers. The uh, standard Islamic narrative, of course, tells us that there was only one, but it also tells us about false prophets. 
other prophets who prophesied something uh, besides Muhammad. So maybe there were several, several preachers that were taught by the Judeo Nazarenes. So they told, they taught the Arab preacher about the Kitab, the sacred scripture here, the black book here. And they told him, they, they taught him the Arabic lectionary, the Arabic Quran here, the, the brown book. And together they made notes and instruction for proclamations and sermons. And the Arab preacher wrote notes, the Judeo Nazarenes wrote notes, and in those notes, it was about the sacred, sacred scriptures of the Judeo Nazarene, the Torah, the Gospel, the Black Book. And it was also about the Arabic lectionary, because the, um, the preacher, his main goal was to, to, to present the Arabic lectionary to, to an Arab audience. And this is what he did. <clears throat> with the Arabic lectionary, with his notes and drafts, and also with other notes, in, and with the help of the Judeo-Nazarenes, he addressed an Arab audience and told them what he had in his notes. He told them about the Kitab, which means the sacred scriptures, the Judeo-Nazarene sacred scriptures. He told them about the Arabic lectionary, the Quran, the Arabic Quran, and we see that in the Quranic text, sometimes he also address, addressed Jews, people of the book, but mostly he addressed an Arab audience. And we can, we can gather from the Quranic text itself and also from other sources that this Arab audience was Christian at the time or had been Christianized already Christianized. <clears throat> what happened then? When the um, Arab conquest took place, when Jerusalem was conquered, the Messiah did not come back. And so the Arab who took Jerusalem got rid of the Judeo-Nazarenes, got rid of the sacred scriptures, got rid of the Arabic lectionary, and got also rid of the Arab preachers because they failed. They failed at their project. They failed at having Jesus come back in Jerusalem. And so the Judeo Nazarenes and their Aramaic texts and their Arabic text, which is the Arabic lectionary, were kind of eliminated around 640 up until the Umayyads. And what, what remained then? What remained was the Arabic notes and instructions for the proclamations, the former proclamation and the sermons. Those were the only Arabic texts that remained. And then someone, a caliph, or I don't know who exactly, someone had the idea to gather all those Arabic notes and instruction and to make a book out of it. And he made the first Arabic mushaf, the first Arabic book. It was not the Quran yet, not the Islamic Quran yet. It was a religious book uh, in Arabic that was a sort of symbol for the Arab leaders of this time, a symbol that they also had religious writings, that they also were legitimate, as legitimate as the Christians and the Jews who already had religious writing. And you see that in this book, which is here in sort of uh, pink, uh, pink color, the, the book talks about the Kitab as being the Judeo-Nazarene um, scriptures. And it talks about the, uh, <clears throat> the Quran as being the Arabic lectionary. And thereafter, when Islam emerged as a religion, the Arabic Mushaf was made into an Islamic Quran. It was kind of the same book. Some corrections were made, some interpolations were made. But the major change was that the, the Kitab, 
the kitab was uh, now identified as the Islamic Quran itself. And the Arabic lectionary was now identified as the Islamic Quran itself, leading to a big confusion in the text and leading to the difficulty we have nowadays to identify the, what the Quran means in the Islamic Quran, what the Kitab means in the Islamic Quran. Because the Quranic text Kitab and Quran words became understood as the Islamic Quran. And now you get the whole picture, the whole process of the, the making of the standard Islamic uh, narratives Quran. This is how I think the Islamic Quran was made out of the sacred scripture from the Jewish, from the Judeo Nazarene, made into an Arabic lectionary, made into notes and instructions for proclamation and sermons. Those notes and instructions were made into a book. And <clears throat> because of this, this book speaks about a Quran and a Kitab. And when Islam was made, the, 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 the sacred scriptures and the Arabic lectionary, the Quran, were given the same sense as the Islamic Quran. And so we have nowadays what the standard Islamic narrative tells us uh, about a, a very, a very strange book, the Islamic Quran, which talks about himself as a book. There is, um, when, when, you, when you look at the Quran according to the standard Islamic narrative, the Quran talks about himself as a book being already done, being already finished, as he talks himself as being a kitab. He talks about the Muslim as being the people of the kitab, the people of the book. And it is very, very confusing. And I think it is one of the reasons that the, the scholars, the academic scholars, have had such a difficulty understanding the Quran because of the confusion, because of of this uh, genius idea of the one who made the Islamic Quran to transform the Arabic lectionary into the Islamic Quran and the sacred scriptures into the Islamic Quran. So this is my, 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 my sort of comic strip explaining, uh, explaining the, um, the making of the Quran. I hope it is clear enough for, for your audience. But Jay, as you know, I will be very happy to answer any question in the comments and, uh, and to answer any of your questions. Well, no, this is excellent. Um, in fact, just leave it on this because this is just so that people can see uh, rather than uh, unpack, uh, uh, taking off the screen. This is good just to leave it there. And I think you've, you've done a, a wholesale summa, summation of everything you've done up on the Quran in just one page. So I would suggest that people take this that they're looking at right now, grab it off the screen, print it off, memorize the six steps. It's six steps that Odin has done here. Uh, it's like a meme. This is like a, a cheat sheet, a crib sheet. Uh, the, we always love cheat sheets. When I would go and take my tests, I would have sheets like this when I was a young kid. And uh, or we would memorize them, go and memorize and memorize the cheat sheet so that when we would take the test, we had that image in our mind. So memorize this. And Muslims also look at this. Can you then understand why so much of the confusion of all these phrases, all of these references, these seeming, uh, well, instructions that are in the Quran, they're still in the text there because it makes sense if you have different teachers trying to instruct on the kitab, the Bible, and also these other scriptures, putting them in, and in lectionaries and hymns and homilies, putting them together, how to read it, how to recite it, even poems with a mnemonic on, on how to even to help you to memorize the text. They're all in there. It's all there. The difficulty is 
we don't understand from in the seventh century the environment from which it is derived. You have helped us do that, Odin. Thanks so much for putting it into the seventh century and showing us if you're going to understand what these what the Quran is really saying, for heaven's sakes, go back to the seventh century and see from where it is taking its material. This is nothing new. It's all lifted material. It's borrowed. It's plagiarized. In many respects, it's been bastardized, unfortunately, the final product. But the germ that is there can be understood once you read it for what it is. Not stop imposing the standard Islamic narrative onto it. Stop taking sin and imposing onto it. Just read it as you have. You've done this in six steps here, showing us how the Judeo-Nazarenes waiting for Jesus to return didn't do so, had all the material there, were trained, and bring it down from Aramaic down into Arabic so the Arab speakers could understand it. And then all of a sudden realizing that when Jesus didn't return, it was for naught. And so it was left just percolating until the Abbasids took a hold of it. And once the Abbasids took a hold of it, they needed not only a man, they needed a book and they needed a place, the book, the man and the place. And that's why the book then became almost sacrosanct, put up on a pedestal. And then all the other materials surrounding not only who this man was, but also what, where it was to be read and how it was to be read. And then later on in the later centuries, it then got lifted up to be almost sacrosanct and almost divine in and of itself. So um, fascinating. That's a great way to put it so we can see it's visualized so that we can actually use it. Thanks so much, Odin. This has been a great help. Terrific as usual. Now, folks, you'll need to respond to it. Do you like it? If you don't, say so. But if you do like it, grab it, use it, print it off. And let's hear some feedback on it as to how it's worked. Thanks so much, Odin. Mm -hmm. Great to have you again. So just um, an another word, uh, uh, Jay. Um, for, for those who want it, they, they can download it from my website. From my website. Okay, so, now we the can take a, a screenshot of your video, but uh, it will be available as a PDF file and as a picture on my uh, website, thegreatsecretofislam.com. And that is now in English. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it published yet? No, it's not published yet. It's not published yet. Uh, it will. It will be done very, very, very soon. But it's uh, almost ready. Didn't you say that back in August of last year? <laughs> We're going to see pushing. Uh, I've done. I've done a lots of things since August. <laughs> lots of things. I've worked on my Mission Ismeri project. I, I've worked on on videos with you, Jace, for example. Yep. But um, don't worry, don't worry, it's coming. The English-speaking world is waiting with bated breath for when you finally get something <laughs> that we can handle, we can hold, so that we can use it. God bless you. But it is also up on your website. Look at the bottom here. I'll just put where the, you, the website is. It'll also be in the description box at the top of the page, at the tops of this video. Good to have you back, Odin. Thanks so much for your work. God bless you and your continued you, work. Get us out this English book so we can understand it and then so that we can use it. Until next time, this is Odin and Jake, 6,000 miles apart, over and out. <music>